Helen McNanny and I am with the University of Newcastle. Now we are going to be talking about the power of LinkedIn today and how you can harness it. What I would like to do just before we begin is just in the chat box if you can let me know how the volume is, if you can all hear me okay. So just just let me know. Fantastic. Thank you, Charlotte. I appreciate that. Okay, so before we start the presentation, I would like to begin by acknowledging the Pamelong clan of the Awabakal people, the traditional owners of the land on which the University of Newcastle is situated and where I am today. We have approximately 30 minutes together. And just so you know, from the point of view of why I am delivering this, this is just some information for you so you can um, get an understanding into who I am and my background. For the purpose of this presentation, I am a uh, qualified career consultant. I have a graduate certificate in career education and development from RMIT. I'm a certified MBTI practitioner, being Myers-Briggs type indicator, and I'm a professional member of the Career Development Association of Australia. And because we will be talking about LinkedIn, that is a link to my LinkedIn profile, which we will be looking at um, this morning as well. So if you want to um, log on to LinkedIn, um, if you currently have a profile, then it would now would be a good time to do that because we're going to be going back and forth between the slides and LinkedIn. So welcome, thank you very much for joining us this morning. We are going to be covering the basics of LinkedIn, just to make sure that everyone um, is putting their best foot forward and their professional brand that is demonstrated online is going to be an accurate representation of themselves. So we're going to be covering the importance of your headline, the about section, your headshot or your photo. We're also going to be talking about how you can leverage LinkedIn and some strategies to use in order to do that. And the one thing you need for this is curiosity. You need to be curious about people and industries. And the importance of all of this is that you want to start expanding your professional network and ultimately the opportunity to gain employment and learn about jobs and how you can apply for these jobs. So first things first, just in the chat box so I can see who I'm talking to, just pop in a Y or an N. Do you have a LinkedIn profile? Just let me know now. Yes. Very good. Okay, you're all here for the right reason. Okay, fabulous. Okay, so if you can log in, then that would be good. All right, before we go any further, I want to clarify the purpose of LinkedIn. It is the world's largest online professional networking platform. The purpose or the mission of LinkedIn, which was um, launched in 2003, it now has, I think it's about 706 million um, members. That's what they currently say on their actual LinkedIn profile. However, a reminder that LinkedIn is not your social media platform. It is not um, Instagram. It is not Facebook. Um, I see sometimes on LinkedIn, some people, in fact, last week I saw a few things that I felt were not suited to the platform. And those things were um, puppy videos. I know we're all working from home, but some people were sharing their puppy videos. Someone had a video of swans, swans crossing the road, which is cute, but again, doesn't belong on LinkedIn. And someone was demonstrating um, how they were building a paper mache bar which is probably fine if your business is selling paper mache vases. Otherwise, it's not the purpose of LinkedIn. 
So I just want to clarify the two, uh, the difference between all the platforms. The mission of LinkedIn is to connect the world's professionals to make them more productive and successful. So I just want to put a line in the sand. If you would not post something, um, sorry, if you wouldn't add something to your resume or say it to your future boss or share it in a meeting or say it at an interview, it does not belong on LinkedIn. So that's the difference. So keep your cute puppy videos and your cat videos for your social media platform. There we go. I'll come off my soapbox now. All right. For your benefit, LinkedIn is not just for middle-aged professionals. LinkedIn realised a long time ago that they wanted to tap into the student market. And these are some of the benefits of having a LinkedIn profile. This is your why. Now, for today's session, we're going to be focusing on just a few things. The top one, how you can connect with alumni. You want to expand your professional network, develop a professional brand, and you want to research companies and industries. And I'm going to show you how you can do that all from the comfort of your lounge room. You don't need to, to meet anyone face to face. This is something you can do from home. So the basics, let's start from the very beginning. Your headline. Your headline is you have 120 characters to use on your headline. You should make sure, now LinkedIn has an algorithm where it will automatically pull in um, your, your current job um, and where you're working. It will do that automatically without you needing to do anything. That's quite a generic um, fallback. I would suggest that we think about something a little bit more unique that is specific to you. We're then going to have a look at your about, which is your summary. And with this section, you have 2,000 characters to play with. My message to you is what is your superpower? What is your point of difference? And what value do you offer to a future employer? And your headshot. Are you interview ready or have you used a selfie? And we're going to touch on that as well. All right, your headline. This is an example. So on the left, we have a uni grad seeking entry level role. That's the fact. Or we can have an aspiring digital marketer. So the difference is one is just generic. And these are actually examples that I have pulled from LinkedIn. If you have something like this on the left, a uni grad seeking entry level role or available for new opportunities or unemployed and looking for work, I would encourage you to rethink your headline. And while the three on the left are probably accurate, they don't give an employer any kind of insight into who you are and what you can offer them. So if you are at the stage where you are yet to graduate and you are going to soon transition from being a student to a professional, then think about using wonderful, rich words like aspiring, aspiring digital marketer, and then put your own phrase to it. Available for new opportunities, that's great, but again, it doesn't tell the employer in which area, what, what is your specialisation, what is your interest. So the next one on the right, next to that, says systems analyst who turns chaos into order. And that tells someone who's reading that, that this person is going to turn my chaotic, my chaotic life into some kind of order. That's great. That's absolutely what I need right now. Unemployed and looking for work, quite possibly. But these on the right, these examples, web developer, full stake engineer, and then some of the specialties are going to give the recruiter or the hiring manager some information into what you can actually do. And you can use some keywords, specific keywords as well. You can chunk it up. It doesn't have to be in sentences. And when we have a look at my profile, you'll see, you'll see that's what I've done. All right. Your headline. So please think about the 120 characters that you want to use and use it to highlight your most important skills, your specialisations or your strengths or even your area of interest. 
And these are some more examples that you can use. Formidable hospitality network. That's not going to necessarily apply to everyone, of course. But I know this person who has used this headline and that speaks the truth. She is absolutely a formidable networker. And then the other person, the other example, helps small businesses escape the feast and famine roller coaster to create consistent, reliable revenue. Now, if I'm needing some reliable revenue, I'm going to have a look at what this person can do and how they can help me. And the other thing, let's just turn it around. When you are creating your LinkedIn profile, it's not always about what you want. You have to read it from um, the eyes of the recruiter or the hiring manager. What are they looking for? What do they need? And how can you help them? So whenever you write something either on your LinkedIn profile or on your resume or any kind of job application, write it down and then read it back and, say, and ask yourself, how does that help? What value am I offering? Can that help someone? And that will actually perhaps just change or alter the way you write and promote your abilities and your skills. All right. Your about section. So this is the next section down. I think one or two paragraphs is fine, maybe 500 words. You have the 2,000 characters to play with. So again, think about what are your superpowers? What's your point of difference? In this section, you can also add uh, some media, video or links, but I would also encourage you to use some industry specific keywords as well. Now, what that actually can look like, if you ask yourselves a couple of these questions, just to put some flesh on it. So if you're absolutely stumped, where do I start? Ask yourself, where am I right now? What am I doing right now? What am I studying? Why did I choose this area? What, 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 if I could have done anything, why is this important to me? And any relevant information about you. Your experience, what do you like to do? Are you working at the moment? Are you on an internship? Are you volunteering? What skills do you offer? And your goals, what are your intentions? What is your objective? What do you want to get out of a career? So these are some examples that you could, you could use. Again, I would encourage you to obviously put your own um, flavor to it. Not all of these are going to apply to everyone. But if you're absolutely stumped to start uh, your opening line, it could be something like, as a highly motivated commerce student at the University of Newcastle, I have a reputation for continuous and consistent academic achievement and a commitment to community engagement while also balancing extracurricular activities, which include serving as a peer mentor. Now that one sentence gives the reader incredible insight into that person. There's a lot of self-awareness there. They're also going above and beyond. They're doing some community work and they're doing the extracurricular activities as well. Similarly, and I don't know who I'm speaking to, if you are already a professional, then the opening line for a professional could be as a, whatever your current role is, uh, my professional experience includes roles in this particular sector, which with a focus on, and then break down your skills, your duties, or the actions, whatever you're actually doing. The conclusion for both could be, now you don't have to get very specific here, you can leave this broad. And I'll be, this is just the opening sentence and the conclusion. Whatever you put in the body is completely up to you. But your conclusion, your final sentence could be something quite broad. You don't have to commit to anything, you don't have to lock yourself. Ultimately, I intend to pursue a role in an area, in, sorry, area of interest, whatever area of interest that is, in the specific sector or industry that you, cho that you have chosen or you're considering, then with an organisation that values and rewards achievement, supports ongoing professional development and promotes equal opportunity for all. That final, uh, final few words can be according to your own values and what you're actually looking for. But that's just some examples that you can actually use to draft it. This one here I actually got um, from a wonderful website called LinkedIn Insights and the link is there if you want to find some more examples. 
but this is a great one to consider. So this uh, reads, I grew up in Austin, Texas, and now find myself at the University of Oxford, where I'm completing degrees in refugee studies and contemporary Chinese studies as a Rhodes Scholar. My research and career interests lie in international diplomacy, human rights, educational inequality, and civil rights. Currently completing my thesis on migration and environmental studies in China, I am interested in making relevant contacts. You can contact me directly on, and this person has included their email address there as well. All right. The all important headshot. So, unlike our friend down the bottom there in the bathroom who has taken a selfie, we're going to disregard him. The headshot should really be you interview ready. So please don't take a photo of yourself in a group shot and just crop everybody else out. Um, don't have any distracting background. Don't take a photo of yourself in the bathroom with your mobile phone. Just make sure it is just from uh, just the headshot. That's all you really need. The background is quite nondescript. And if I was going to look at this, these, the profiles of these people, they're all very presentable and they're all interview ready. So that's the guidelines. So look directly into the camera, smile, be relaxed, just a nondescript background and present as if you are ready for interview. You could go right now, if they phoned you, you're ready for an interview. All right. Moving on to getting curious. Now, another question for you. Have you, yes or no, just pop a yes or no in the chat. Have you ever had a conversation with someone? Yes or no? Of course you have. We all have. Wonderful. Okay, who's heard of an information interview, yes or no? Who's heard of an information interview? No? Jesse, you have, okay. All right, there is no mystery to an information interview because it is a conversation. If you have had a conversation with anyone and you have shown some interest and you have shown some curiosity and you have asked some questions about that person, you've had a conversation, you can conduct an information interview. So an information interview is a chance for you to discuss and gather information about jobs and possible careers by simply interviewing people who work in that industry or similar roles. Now you can do that a number of ways. You can um, certainly for the purpose of this presentation, we're going to do it by leveraging our LinkedIn profile. This is where the power of LinkedIn comes in. So by having a look at your own um, university's um, LinkedIn page, and I'm sure they would have a LinkedIn page, if you go on to the alumni um, tool, and I'll just show you how to do that, just bear with me one second. Okay. All right, so the University of Newcastle. So if we go to alumni, and if you want to do a search, just in the search bar, put in your university, or even just for the um, sake of time, there are about 10 minutes left, use this one as an example. University of Newcastle, alumni. Now, you can search alumni by title, keyword, or company. So let's just do All right, so LinkedIn is now going to give us where they live and where they work. These are the people that you can actually connect with 
So this is leveraging LinkedIn. These people have already trod your path, but they are working in an industry that is desirable to you. And if you want to find out more information about how to get into that industry, how they recruit, what attributes they look for, when do they recruit, you can start connecting with these people. Now, if we choose Sam, it says here, add a note. You are absolutely going to add a note. You are not going to just send the generic message request to connect. You want to personalise this and tailor it. Now, when you do, I've got some samples how you can actually um, contact these people and some scripts you can actually use, saying that you're researching a specific industry. When you do actually connect with these people, then these are some of the questions that you can ask them. You're curious, you want to know, how did you get into this industry? What are the major tasks and responsibilities of your job? What are the skills and attributes required? What are the qualifications, any professional associations that you are a part of or suggest that I join? And then the last question, is there anyone else in your network you suggest I contact? Now, when you think about all the information that you are gathering and all of the answers to these questions are going to arm you with information that you can use when you are applying for jobs, when you are at an interview, and when you are speaking to other professionals. And this is an information interview, and it's just about getting curious. So if for a moment you think about the industries that you are just curious about, how do you want to start that conversation? What information do you want to get from that? Now, when you conduct information interviews, a couple of things are going to start happening for you. If you set the goal to conduct maybe five or ten information interviews, and you may have to reach out to a number of people before they start to respond, these things are going to happen. So the network of people that, that are actually working in the industry that you're curious about have now heard of you. Five to ten people in that network now know who you are. You then start to use the language of the insiders, not just as a student, but now you become familiar with the terminology. And now you become interesting because you understand that, you can use that in other conversations. In any kind of interaction, you can then confidently say, oh, I've just spoken to so-and-so from XYZ, do you know that they're doing blah, blah, blah right now? And you're becoming informed about the industry and other people are becoming informed about you as well. So to begin, if you wanted to contact an organisation, you can jump on the phone, you can contact them directly. You can also obviously introduce yourself, say what you're currently studying, but the honest truth is you are doing some research about a specific role in their industry. Can you recommend someone that they may be able to speak with? If you want to contact an individual via LinkedIn, there's another script that you can actually use down here as well. Now remember that Overall, people are, are busy. At the moment, they're probably working from home. They might have more time on their hands, but be respectful of their time. So if you say that you want to set up a 15-minute interview, and that's all it is, 15 minutes, just stick to that interview. Oh, so I beg your pardon, stick to that time. At the end of that 15 minutes, wrap it up, thank them for their time, and then say, is there anyone else that you think I should speak to? Always conclude with that question because you want to keep it going. You want to keep building on this momentum. Now, do you think you could have lunch with 100, stra 100 strangers? Yes or no? Let me know. Pop it in the chat box. Could you have lunch with 100 strangers? <laughs> We've got a mixture. No. Yes, over at least a year. Yes, Benedict, thank you. Yes, very good. How many, if you really tried, yes. And maybe 100 lunches would be beyond the budget. Maybe it's 100 coffees. If you really tried, you could. Now, how many of you have heard of Kaylee Chu? Yes or no? 
No? No? Okay. All right. So, Kaylee Chu was an international student at the University of Melbourne. She realised very quickly that she had to improve her confidence and her communication skills. So she set herself the goal to have 100 lunches with 100 strangers. And she did that by using her LinkedIn profile. She sent invitations to locals explaining her goal and they came to the party and they helped her. As a result, Kaylee's life was absolutely transformed. She, I think she was studying finance. Right now, well, everything's on hold with COVID, but she um, resigned from her role and she's actually started her own company and she's now a professional speaker. So she went from being someone who lacked confidence in communication to now speaking in front of people. And the two links, if you Google Kaylee Chu, you can have a look at her website and see what she's doing. Um, but you can also have a look at her LinkedIn profile. And she did that by using the same strategy that we have just talked about today. So this is not impossible. This can actually, this is within your reach, you can do that. You don't have to have lunch with 100 strangers, but I would encourage you to start using information interviews. Now, remember I mentioned using a note when you're connecting with people? Please be um, professional and respectful. There really should be some sort of mutual benefit. There should be something that you both have in common. And for this case, it could be that you want to work in that industry. That could be the common uh, denominator. This is just a sample of a note that I sent to request with someone, just so you get an, an idea of how you can draft a request to connect. I heard Brett speak at a conference in Melbourne um, and I thought his team genuinely were doing some fabulous work in Auckland and I wanted to connect with him and follow him. That's an example of a little note that you can drop in when you are connecting with people. All right, jobs, all important jobs. Let's go back to our LinkedIn profile. So again, if we use the university, as an example. This is one way, obviously up here on your LinkedIn profile, you can set up your um, specific jobs by title, but this is another tool that you can use. If you want to follow a particular um, organisation or company on LinkedIn, LinkedIn has set it up so that if you have a job alert for a particular organisation, the hiring manager can check who is currently receiving job alerts from them and then they will have a look at, look at your profile. So that's something that you might want to consider because LinkedIn had built that in. If you're that keen to follow an organisation and you have a job alert set up, the recruiter or the hiring manager can check that and see who's following and now contact them by them. So this is the way that you can do it. These are the jobs currently advertised at the University of Newcastle. You click down here, see all jobs. See this little button up here, job alert on. Daily emails, you can change this of course to weekly. You probably wouldn't want it daily. Emails and notifications, let's go with email, save. And now whenever the Newcastle University posts a job, I'm gonna get a notification for it. Okay, that would be something I would encourage you to use as well as well as the normal um, job alerts that you can set up here also. All right. The last thing I wanted to mention to you is that LinkedIn has some hashtags. Now, if you search on people and location in LinkedIn, and these are just some recommendations for the hashtags you can use, hashtag hiring, hashtag now hiring, where hiring, etc., it will produce a list of results for you. So there, there's more than just seek in relation to your job search strategy. Utilise LinkedIn as well. This is another avenue that you can consider also. All right. I would encourage you to get started. Remember that you are a work in progress. Um, start with some of the easy stuff and the basics, your contact details, your education. If you can get your headline right, 
include your skills, your interests and your aspirations.